it's going pretty well. Um, we ended up posting uh, registrations for it a little later than in previous years, um, just because we were checking all our options to see like what kind of venue we wanted to do. Last year, we were indoors at the Broncos facility. Um, and it was awesome, but it just wasn't enough space. Um, so like the kind of give and take is guaranteed good weather indoors versus like kind of rolling the dice a little bit on doing something outdoors. So we're in Boulder. We're going to be on the CU campus on their turf fields. As of today, Wednesday, the 24th, um, you know, we're 10 or 11 days out. The weather looks like it's going to hold up, but Colorado is unpredictable. So hopeful that we've got, you know, something in the forties or fifties and it's, and it's a good, uh, a good experience for folks in that regard. But um, yeah, I mean, that's kind of where we're at. We got a lot of registrants as always uh, in the planning stages. I want to make sure everybody's yeah. Having a good experience and learning something and get an opportunity to, to showcase what they can do. Yeah. Well, I mean, we're, we're hopeful that we can put together a, a group and, and a strategy that, that gets us to the playoffs again this year. I think, um, you know, last year we had a solid season, but we didn't do as well as we thought we had the talent to do. So I think, this year, we've got a really good um, core of, of returning players from last year that have been strategizing about how we can make sure and stay in a, a good positive mind space, develop good uh, cultural pieces and process-oriented uh, frameworks so that um, we feel like we can play up to our potential a little better than we did last year. Because it was a great season and we had a good time. Um, I think the fans enjoyed it, but uh, we I think we think we could have won that LA game and you know, potentially made it back to championship weekend. So, I mean, it's, we lost four games all by one goal. So, you know, it could go, those scales could be tipped pretty easily with one or two plays. So I don't want to overreact. It's interesting because um, on paper, we had initially thought they'd lost some overall talent. Um, some of their guys didn't return from the previous year. But they were way more cohesive, way more organized on offense and defense. They, I mean, they were genuinely one of the best teams in the league, and they, you know, absolutely earned that spot in the championship. Uh, you know, both our games we lost by a goal, um, but their offense is really hard to defend. They utilize horizontal space really, really well. They have phenomenal like continuation chemistry, and how they attack different phases of the field is really effective. And then defensively, they're they're super athletic. Um, they were the year before also, but they were less cohesive and they gave the ball back very frequently after they'd get turns. Uh, and this year they did that. They were more cohesive when they were on D and then when they did get a turn, they were a lot better at punching those breaks. And so they, they leveled up last year. Uh, and that's awesome because they're a great organization. They're well-run, they're super well coached. And I'm, I'm excited for that to be a really competitive rivalry always. Cause I know they're going to be really good this year. We're going to be really good this year too. And, you know, this, the West is, is a strong division. I think, um, you know, some of the feedback we got from players is we wanted to have a more consistent O-line group. Um, we changed personnel a lot uh, of who was playing our offensive points throughout the season. Some of that was availability. Some of that was just trying to figure out what worked. So I think one of the focuses we'll have is, having a more consistent grouping that is more empowered to feel like they can play poorly and then they're not going to get moved around. Like they can like work through the the challenges and like figure it out together instead of like playing poorly and then ending up in a different role. So we want to be really thoughtful about putting that group together and then allow them the opportunity to really build throughout the season. More, more similar to what we did in the, the 2022 season where we had essentially the same O grouping almost, you know, almost the entire season. Um, and they played really well until, you know, we hit, Chicago's really, really good D in the a championship weekend. So, you know, that's kind of a, a big picture focus piece. And then, uh, you know, schematically, we want to keep playing really hard, fundamentally sound D. Offensively, I think we're going to put a premium on on developing skills and, and, and thinking about how we win in small spaces and how we uh, allow people to thrive within their unique skill sets. So that's all pretty broad stuff. But, um, you know, we, we know we've got athletic talented folks and we're just going to hope we can uh we can put it together from a schematic standpoint i agree um we've got some really talented young players that were on the team last year um, or that i know are trying out this year uh, some are still in college some just started college um 
age is just a number, you know, obviously they have less experience um, than most of the players that have been around longer, but I, I wholeheartedly believe um, that we've got some guys that are in their early twenties or like early to mid twenties that are going to be contributors. And a big focus will be, you know, getting them the reps that are going to help them find success. I, you know, I mentioned just before, but Atkin Arnstein, he's, uh, he played on Johnny Bravo last year also. And he was, he's, uh, when he's healthy, he's, an unbelievably talented defender his like physical skill set is just almost peerless so you know if he continues on that trajectory he'll he'll be a huge I mean he already was but he'll be an even more impactful player so yeah we the, uh, you know the the connection to college players and young players for Summit is real is going to continue you know and, w and we're definitely going to put a premium on on um, making sure they get the reps to to grow and, and get better because they got amazing potential. it's part of like the journey and the growth piece for like coaches like myself also I mean I've been doing it for 20 years um, so I've got some experience but I'm still trying to get better um, there are stressors but it's not related to working with players it's just trying to balance out expectations you know being able to like take deep breaths in the moments when we're struggling and like stay process focused and not worry too much about outcome you know because I'm super competitive also like I, I want to win everything always and that's just part of who I am but like knowing that like the best path to winning isn't always being focused on yeah. winning uh, so, something I've been working on the last couple of years. So, I mean, it's a lot of fun, um, but you know, when we're at the practice field or we're, you know, we're with the team, like those are the moments that aren't stressful. That's just, that's just what it's all about. You know, it's all of like the prep and planning and logistics and, you know, like the organizational pieces that I support can, you know, get a little stressful, just like getting all like the summit's got a lot of moving parts. So getting all that together, you know, tryouts are super fun, but coordinating 130 people into like a semblance of drills where they're going to get touches and stay active. And we have opportunities for them to showcase, like it is going to be really fun and it is super, super stressful because it's just really hard to, to like build all the pieces out that, that work well for that huge number of folks. I mean, there's a lot of different things, but end all be all. I mean, the reason I do it is I really enjoy it. So. I talked quite a bit, um, you know, cause we coach in a couple of places together. Um, and I think we want to blend those lines a little bit more. My, my focus will still be more on the D side and his focus will be more on the O side, but we don't want it to be so partitioned. Like we don't want it to be completely separate. We want to have like more, you know, connection across, you know, I can work with O, he can work with D more readily. Um, so we're going to work on like some strategies for, for how we're going to do that this year. Um, and we are, there's a couple of moving pieces, but we are looking at um, likely hiring an additional coach uh, to join the two of us to kind of work um, like as a culture coach, somebody who can really, you know, they, they'll, they'll support in all the ways that all the coaches do, but like their primary focus will be on like the team's energy, you know, making sure we're, we're you know, saying the appropriate things in huddles or like staying focused on like cultural pieces, you know, that are going to keep us in that good headspace. So we do want to bring somebody on whose focus can be that we're just there's just some logistical pieces before we like post a job description or not. But the plan is is to add in another member um, to the staff and and see, you know, and so that they can kind of take on that that realm. Yeah, um, it was something that I largely did last year, um, and it just, you know, that plus D strategy plus logistics, I just, I got pretty overwhelmed, and I'm not sure I did a great job, um, you know, in some of those realms, so, like, being able for me to stay a little more focused on a couple of the other things will be really beneficial, and, and somebody who maybe has a little bit more defined or mature skill set related to, like, the cultural pieces or, or, you know, like really, you know, being that voice in the huddle, I think, I think that'll be great. So.